Hey everyone! In this video, we're diving into the world of manga drawing and checking out some cool techniques for inking and coloring in both designer and pixel persona modes. Let's kick things off by drawing this girl. You can find tons of resources about drawing manga in various YouTube tutorials, so I won't go too deep into the theories. Instead, I'll share some helpful tips along the way. There are so many talented artists out there, and I really encourage you to explore their work. This time, I'll be drawing in my own style. Try not to make too many sketch lines like I sometimes do. It can get pretty confusing when deciding which lines to keep. Cleaning up your lines first will definitely speed up your inking process. It's true that each artist has their own unique line style, and you can learn a lot from watching others. Just remember, they make it look easy because they've put in the time and effort to get good. Before we start drawing, let's create a new brush. I'll be using a solid brush. Go to the brushes panel, create a new solid brush, and customize it however you like. If you're just starting out, double-clicking on the brush will take you to the properties page. If you're using a Wacom tablet, make sure to adjust the pressure settings to what feels comfortable for you and you can right-click to rename or copy it. I suggest creating a couple of brush sizes to speed up the process a little. Or, you can try downloading some from various websites for Affinity Designer. Keep in mind that only solid brushes can be expanded into shapes. For more details on brushes, be sure to check out my other video about the brush tool. If your tablet feels too slippery, try placing a piece of paper on it to create some friction, it really helps. And remember to turn off window ink in the Wacom mapping for a smoother experience. Many people ask me what the black buttons on the side and top are. They are Wacom on-screen shortcuts. When you start drawing, don't forget to select pressure control if your brush is set for pressure sensitivity. Otherwise, it won't respond as expected. Adjust the stabilizer settings to what you prefer. How smooth do you want your lines to be? If you want to draw long lines, increase the length value to have better control over your strokes. To make them smoother while drawing, hold down the control key to select curve or node points for editing or deletion. As for inking, there's a simple principle I know. Use thick and thin lines to create depth, dimension, and shadows for your characters. I admit I haven't drawn much in this style, and I have to give credit to many artists out there who really do an excellent job. Just consider my work as a quick example. While the brushes in Affinity Designer might not be as powerful as those in other programs, I think they work quite well for most things. Personally, I've found that Clip Studio Paint has the best brush response, inking in vector mode is the way to go because it makes editing so much easier. That way, you won't have to start from scratch all the time. As you're drawing, try to make your lines as gapless as possible. This is a solid rule for drawing programs. But if you want a perfect vector result, you'll need to close the shapes by snapping the last node of the line to where you want it to meet. I'm going to focus on coloring in Pixel Persona to keep things efficient. Alright, that should work. My lines might look a bit too thick, check if there are any gaps. Next, delete any unnecessary lines. By using the Shape Builder tool or the Eraser tool in Pixel Persona to create a mask and erase unwanted lines. Some people might ask, why don't you just draw in raster mode from the start? The reason is simple, I tend to edit a lot as I go. I don't always have my character fully designed beforehand, so vector mode suits me better. When you're done with your vector lines, be sure to click scale with object before resizing your character, or the strokes might end up larger than you intended.
I think a lot of people love this style of art, anime, and many like drawing fan art. I'm one of them, but I'm still learning the finer details to really nail down this style. I believe most of us already know a lot about drawing and coloring in raster mode. And if you've worked with digital painting in Photoshop or other software, you probably get the hang of it, as the principles are quite similar. I'll give coloring in vector a shot, but you might notice it doesn't quite work. Even if the lines look seamless, they might not be truly closed shapes. One way to solve this is by expanding all the stroke lines and then using the Vector Flood Fill tool to color them. But this time, I'll be keeping the stroke lines as they are instead. Personally, I think working in Vector isn't the best for manga style, so if that's the case for you, go ahead and rasterize the lines and color in Pixel Persona however you like. I'm just here to help you get the hang of these tools. For coloring, I'll use the Reference Layer method. Just create a new pixel layer on top. Set the flood fill tool to current layer and below, and adjust the tolerance as needed. The more it covers, the better. I suggest separating your work into different layers, like the face, hair, and other areas. This makes it easier to manage your work later. When coloring smaller areas, just paint over them, and don't worry if you see the paint going over your ink lines. You can always bring the ink layer to the top later. Alternatively, you can use the freehand selection tool, similar to the lasso tool, to draw an area and fill it with color, or you can use a brush. Just make sure to select the correct layer. To create a clipping mask, just click the insert inside the selection button at the top. From there, you can either add a new pixel layer or draw vector shapes inside it. This method works in both designer and pixel persona. And if you forget, just drag the layer to where you want it. Using clipping mask is great for non-destructive edits. If you use the brush tool in pixel persona and enable the protect alpha function, it can be harder to adjust. You might think switching between designer and pixel persona modes is a hassle, but it's not really. I'm just showing how each mode works and what it can do, so it might seem a bit confusing. If you've seen my previous videos, you'll probably catch on quickly. I'm just trying to help you draw in a way that feels familiar to what you're used to, so you can decide if you like it, while learning more about the program along the way. I might be overly enthusiastic about Affinity Designer, but honestly, there are still some essential tools missing for me. We'll see in version 3 what exciting new tools will be added. I didn't say which mode is easier or harder to work with, because they can actually complement each other well. Just use the tools from each mode together. Once you've finished coloring, this time, I'll add details in designer persona since I find it more comfortable. The process is pretty similar, select the layer you want, click insert inside the selection, and then draw shadows with the pencil tool. At this point, 
I recommend using references from online or trying to replicate certain styles. See how close you can get, and when you can, adapt it to your own style. Learn new methods, study theories, that's how I've been improving over time. Add all sorts of details and effects, like Gaussian blur, in areas that fit your manga style. You'll see that both modes can really complement each other. Choose whichever one feels right for you, it's totally your call. I know there are easier ways and the tools in each program can help you work more efficiently. I'm just offering you an alternative approach for working in Affinity Designer. How does one usually change hair color? Go back to pixel mode and fill it with a new color. Since you're already in this mode, draw a shape around it and just change the color. Then, use the vector tools to work. I believe that every program could use continuous updates and new tools to help improve our workflow. When I first discovered Affinity Designer, I thought it wouldn't have as many tools as Illustrator or Procreate, but after giving it a try, I found its capabilities to be quite similar. Sure, it may lack some features that speed things up, but if it works well for logos or other projects, and considering it's a one-time payment, it's a real money saver. Alright, that wraps up this video. I hope you found it helpful. If you have any suggestions or spot any mistakes, I'm all ears. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.